Hey guys, my name is Dalton. David Sanborn. Jennifer Huber. Tell me about your bug. What year is it? It's a 1949 Volkswagen Beetle. It's not the deluxe, very plain standard. How long have you owned it? Two years now. I was not so much a Beetle or Volkswagen guy. The last Volkswagen I ever owned was Volkswagen Scirocco, one of the worst cars I've ever owned. So this car dragged us kicking and screaming back into the Volkswagen world, but I'm glad we did. How'd you acquire the car? Well, we're fans of a band. And we heard that you know, Florian Schneider passed away. He was the previous owner of the car. We heard that the car is for sale and we wrote what they called the love letter to the person that was selling it explaining who we were and why we wanted it and why we would be good custodians of the vehicle and he agreed to our price and we arranged for shipping and now it's ours to, to take care of. To be a little more specific, Florian Schneider may not be a household name in the United States sure but fine. if you're German or British you know the band Kraftwerk. She's going out to nightclubs drinking just champagne. We are the robots. Faire du Nord Paris, Roubaix, Tour de France, Tour de France. Craftwork conjuring up the blueprints of a genre that wouldn't exist for at least 20 years. And he was one of the two founding members of the band all the way back in 1969. So this was his city car. It was yeah. his daily driver in Dusseldorf. He we had a restore. parallel parked out in front of his apartment. That's yeah. cool. His grocery getter, I guess. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, so we knew he owned the car a few years before he passed away. And I dreamed of owning it. And I kept thinking, I need to write him a letter and see if he'll ever consider selling the car, having no idea what the future held. No. Yeah. Like, like, it's tragic the way that we wound up owning it because it was his sister, Claudia, alerted us to the fact that the car was going to be sold as part of the estate. We wound up buying the car from a reseller in Metmon outside of Dusseldorf who was selling it for Florian's daughter, yeah. Lisa. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. So it kept us in the fold of the family that we were dealing with. We're on our way to go get the car, Florian's Beetle, in Metmon. We're with our pals, Rudy and Barney. <laughs> yes. We're on our way to pick up the Beetle. I haven't seen it. Jennifer hasn't seen it. First time for us to see it. Barney gives us a gift, and here it is. <laughs> How awesome is that? All right, well, we're going to be there pretty soon. So <laughs> let's go lay our eyes on this car for the very first time. Now, was it fully in the condition that it is now? Yeah. So you drove it like that? being custodians of it, yes. Okay. We've had some minor things done to it. Well, minor. Florian must have been one of the most OCD people on this planet regarding his music, but regarding that car... Not so much? Not no. so much. The car is perfect, don't get me wrong, but when we bought it... It had a headlight out, a taillight out. Minor just, things. But it's that's like unheard of yeah. in Germany to have a car on the road with a taillight and a headlight out. And it had a really bad exhaust leak that driving, even with the windows half way down we were still both getting high off the fumes yeah with having a german brother over in munich that's he nice. told me they're constantly inspected yeah. and for that to get past that's rare like you yes, said yes it's a very unusual but there are distinct differences between american automotive culture and german in germany when we bought that car when we drove it back to dusseldorf people on the autobahn were slowing down and waving yeah. and giving and plenty of space on the highway and, yeah. everybody was like whoa yeah. This is exciting. We're now about to embark on our uh, Kafer adventure. The car has been sitting and warming up for a bit. It sounds healthy. They yep. just changed the uh, Earl for us in the car to start it. That's the engine off. That's the engine on. Then there's a switch, which is what starts the car. And it's a six volt car. So the starter sounds very sleepy. Like it just doesn't want to get up in the morning. One gauge, and here it is. I have no idea how much gasoline Benzene is currently in the vehicle, but I do know that if it starts to run out of gasoline, there's this lever here that I flip, I think down or clockwise, and then that puts it into reserve just like a motorcycle. And this is my turn signal for left and right, and the semaphores pop out. I don't know, and I don't know. <laughs> I just don't know. This is the heat. It works. This is the choke. Again, I'm not sure because I started it without using the choke. And this is it. Hi, Jennifer. Hi. Let's hit the road. On the Autobahn. We're actually on the Autobahn in the Craftwork Beetle going an astonishing 80 kilometers per hour, assuming this is correct. Oh, extremely exciting. I would say this is a childhood dream come true, but as a child, I never thought that I could dream about driving for its promoting quite a bit of anxiety and happiness all at the same time. <laughs> Never imagined doing something as odd and different and unique as this.
drives good. The transmission's a little crashy, a little grindy, but I suppose that goes with the age. Heater, it sort of works. It's a very cold day, like 35 degrees in Fahrenheit, a little bit above zero if you're European. We're in the slow lane on the Audubon, far right lane. We're enjoying all the comforts of going slow, <laughs> even though in this car it feels like I'm exceeding every speed limit. And it's fun. We're going to enjoy this car until we put it in a 20-foot container and have it sent back to the United States. In the United States, nobody even notices it. Yeah, they, they want to push you off the road. It's invisible here. Yeah. That's the first thing. The second thing is that when we bought the car in Germany, there was this societal pearl clutching because they didn't want to sell this important car to the Americans. Well, they wanted to keep it in Germany, the sale necessarily. Was widely publicized, so it was already a done deal by the time the newspaper was putting articles out that we were the buyers of it, so the opportunity was already gone. So you had to do some digging to really purchase it. Yeah. 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 We're lucky that the sister reached out to us or we may not have known about it. That was nice of her. It was very nice of her. It worked out for the best. It was day number two. We were driving into Dusseldorf. It was like cold as shit. It was so cold and like on the verge like of freezing. And raining. That's not fun. This thing <laughs> sideways and I stop at a gas station to gas it up and this car pulls in behind us and two women get out of it and they point at us and they go, it's the Americans. <laughs> Owning a German car. I saw you in the paper. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So you're already celebrities and you didn't even know. <laughs> I didn't even yeah. know. That's cool. Yeah. yeah, that car is in immaculate shape. Thank That's crazy you. that that was in the same shape that it was when Street he bars. owned it. Yeah. I got to give the man credit. His other car was a Gullwing like mid 50s SL Mercedes. Okay. And now the estate is trying to talk us into buying his 64 panel van. VW? It yeah. It used to be a fire truck. It was a fire truck. It was red and then it got painted for a movie. Uschi flüchtete aus ihrem spießigen Zuhause, verliebte sich in einer langen. And now it's gray. And now it's gray, just like the Beetle. So yeah. it's the bookend set to the Beetle. The problem, though, is that I think we got a particularly good deal on the Beetle, but but may not get that on that. We won't get that on the van, yeah. and the cost of importing it is going to be really high. Yeah, would be cool to own too. It would be from the same owner. It would be. At least really you got fun. one of them. Yeah. The thing you need to do now is make friends with the new owner of exactly. wh whoever purchases that. Yeah. Whoever buys the fire truck. Yeah. yeah, that's a good point. We just have to hope that. Whoever buys it is a fan of Kraftwerk and not just a Volkswagen. Person. And takes care of it and doesn't let it go astray from the condition it was when he owned it. Yeah. yeah. Now, when I say we're kind of dragged back to the VW world, we're not not car people. I just never yeah. had a Volkswagen. Yeah. I knew people that had Beetles, but I started out with a Barracuda. <laughs> That's a nice car to start out with. <laughs> yeah. And parked in our garage is a Triumph TR6, okay. a Nissan PAL, a Barth, and a 300ZX. Yeah. So you like a little bit of everything. Yeah. A little bit of everything. This is the Venn diagram overlapping between music and cars. Hey. That's fine. I grew up with American Muscle, and my father restored GTOs, Camaros, Firebirds, and whatnot. Personally, when he brought a 78 Beetle home, I said, that thing is ugly. <laughs> and here I am today with it tattooed on my arm, and I'm here at a Volkswagen show, and I live and breathe it now. I so. can see getting dragged into the world of, of loving air-cooled Volkswagens. The deal with owning a rock star's car, especially one who's passed on, is that when you open your garage door and you see it parked there, and it's now yours. It's bonkers. I'm like sure I that's very surprised. Real. Like work on Surreal. And I'm like, so Florian, I, how you doing? I did. <laughs> His ghost. Yeah. I didn't even want to vacuum the car when I first yeah. bought it. Just leave it with the dust and whatever that's in it from him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then we wound up having the vacuum it because it had a moth infestation that was chewing on the wool carpets. But I don't think that's good. Oh no, we took care of that though. That was the other gift from Germany. But you wouldn't know. Everything looks great now. Now, how often do you actually drive it on the streets? I mean, because with a car that old and with that much of a story, I'm sure it's very nerve-wracking being on the road with all these crazy individuals out there nowadays. It doesn't have crumple zones, and it's got a steering column that'll spear you right through your there's chest. There's no seatbelts. And there's no seatbelts. And nobody knows what a trafficator is. Yeah, yeah, it's got the trap <laughs> that nobody, <laughs> nobody sees semaphores anymore. <laughs> we drive it rarely. Okay. Rarely. And it's like Saturday morning or Sunday morning. There's been a couple of close by car shows like this one where I'm like the wing vehicle, making sure that when lane changes happen, I'm blocking the, the lane change. Behind, okay. Yes, because you have to stand on the brakes to get the yeah. lights to come on. So oh, there's really yeah, yeah. basically no brake lights. Yeah. So I'm protecting from the rear. Yeah, that's not fun. <laughs> a little scary, a little nerve wracking on the way to the show, I'm sure. So we discovered Hillsborough County, Florida has the highest rate of insurance fraud per capita in the United States. 
and it also has the highest fatality rate per capita of the United States. So taking that into account, we don't drive it that much. On Every once in a while, there's a German pub around the corner from our house called The Independent. Okay, that sounds cool. It's a great Lots of good Pilsners and on tap, so we go there with the car. But otherwise, it doesn't really see Florida traffic. No. There's a lot of crazy individuals out there, that's for sure. Yeah, I was hitting a bug at 16 years old at 50 miles an hour. I'm somehow still here, so I'm just gonna tell you, it's not fun. No. <laughs> I'm sure you spun around like a top. I did. It was a wrong way driver, a past six one way signs, and a bunch of red reflectors at 10 o'clock on a Friday night in a small town. What did side. they say? Try that in a small town? Try that in a small town. Don't try that in a small town. Well, they tried that in a small town. They tried that. It's very nice to see it here, and you won best of show. Last year, best of show. David Sanborn with the 49. <laughs> Thank you for bringing out the rain, buddy. Best air cooled goes to David Sanborn with that 49. That thing is amazing. Yeah! Really? Yeah. Really? Thank you. I'm honored. This is his first real outing. Thank you. So, uh, yeah. Thanks again, David. Thank and you were worried about bringing it out. One last point of interest on this car. Yeah. It might seem like a rich people thing to buy a Rockstar Idols car, but we did the math and it makes more sense to have this car than it does to have an IRA. Like, it'll gain value faster. You can't drive an IRA. There's yeah. nothing cool about an IRA. And you live once and we needed to make the shot at saying Enjoy. we want to buy this car and the yeah. worst he could say was no. Yep. Yeah. And I say that to say that we spent more importing this car from Germany than we've ever spent buying any car that we've ever owned. Yeah. Like you said, the value is just going to keep on increasing yeah. way more than all these other cars because of the story that comes with it. So you won't keep it forever if you find a good owner to take care of it. We're kicking around the idea of, of moving abroad. But and until such time, we're trying to be the best custodians. We're going to be the best possibly. custodians for it. Well, it's good to hear. It's, yeah. it's at a great home. No idea, no plans on yeah. selling it. But I again, I don't know what the future it. holds. If you ever guys do want it when they're ready to sell it, contact them. <laughs> People who say they're never going to sell it, they're full of Very true. Dalton, we're pleased to talk to you. Yes. Thanks for asking us. Thank yes. you very much. A pleasure. Our pleasure. Very nice Thank talking you. to you guys. It's great to see you out here at the VW Getaway. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Jim Huber. I'm used to seeing his name, not yours. <laughs> Thank you. Look, it's here. The Kafer from Florian Schneider has made its four month journey from Amsterdam to Tampa, Florida, 1.30 in the morning. This is Shakir. Shakir is the man who has driven it here. Thank you very much. No problem. Uh, thank you to our lovely videographer. What's your name? Lady D. Lady D. Thank you, Lady D. We're going to roll it off the trailer. There you go. Nice. All right, we're safely on Florida soil. So we're taking it to the DMV and it's gonna be made legal. This is the first time we're gonna drive it here in the United States. This is so utterly unlike how we were driving it in Dusseldorf where it was cold and rainy and gray. It's gray. It may start to rain, but it's not cold. It's not miserable. Well, that's a different kind of miserable. <laughs> it's a hot. <laughs> it's a very different kind of miserable. It's a hot miserable. So there it is. Interestingly, uh, it really likes the warmer weather because it starts right up. So we're gonna fire it up. I'll show you how easy that happens when you're in a place that's not cold. So you take your official Florian Schneider key, turn it oddly enough counterclockwise, and that unlocks your ability to switch the ignition on, which is the ein or out switch. And when it's in ein, you get the light on that indicates your ignition is now good. Push button start, just like a modern car. I think we're good. We're back. The place is the real deal. Probably the closest you're gonna get the Southern California Volkswagen culture on the East Coast. The car should be done. We're gonna go talk to the owner of the business. I think his name's Jim. We're gonna see what all was done to make the Florian Beetle great. And today seems special enough to be a Sophia Schneider day. This is one of her creations. Those are little tiny TEE trains. Don't have a trailer, at least not yet. I drive it home. That means driving in insane Florida traffic, but it's a Saturday. Jennifer's gonna follow behind me. It's gonna be a nice barrier for bad things happening. Bye-bye, Jim. All right, keying the ignition. Turn that, turn this to ein. Got our lights on. I'm not even gonna use the choke. That's amazing. I love it. All right, let's hit the road.
It's official, Florian's Beetle is at its first ever concourse show. We are showing it off very proudly here. Maybe we'll win. There she is. We've named her Flo after Florian. This is still early in the morning. It's like 8.30. The place hasn't really got crowded yet. Judges are judging. They're walking around being judgy. I don't know why they're so judgmental. So wish us luck. an awesome story. I gotta say a huge thank you to David and Jennifer for taking the time so I can forever preserve it for you guys out there to enjoy. And if you enjoyed this video, definitely show it some love. All the support is greatly appreciated and it means so much to us. If you'd like to see this story in a physical format, stay tuned because it will be in Volksmania issue 19.